remind us that our nation is celebrating its 245th birthday, our independence from the dominance and control of the British monarch. The United States of America was born in the pursuit of freedom, declaring in the second paragraph of the Declaration of Independence that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Can you say amen? amen. Well, if you're not enjoying life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, you might want to look elsewhere because this land is full of every one of those opportunities. Some in America today reject the Constitution of the United States and the Declaration of Independence, calling it racist. To me, that is absolute foolishness. Yes, some of the framers of the Constitution and the writers of the Declaration of Independence were slave owners. But they acknowledged to, for all to know that all men, and also meaning women, are created equal by their creator. These documents, which are very important to us, guarantee and assure each man and woman, child in the United States, of our freedoms. It is also important to remember the times in which these documents were written. They were not written in our times. That was 245 years ago. This came to us by transmission of almost 2,000 years ago and 2,000 years before that, the Old Testament, and we don't throw it away. We need to understand that we come into knowledge in a progressive manner. We received these documents 245 years ago, followed by an additional 85 years to the Civil War from 1861 to 1865, which resulted in approximately 650,000 to over 700,000 war dead and the assassination of a president who advocated for the freedom of all, especially those in slavery. President Abraham Lincoln understood we are not a perfect nation. No nation ha was or ever will be a perfect nation. Nevertheless, in his first inaugural address, he reminded of the great audience that came to watch him swear in to be their president at that time. He reminded them of the second paragraph in the Declaration of Independence that we have formed this union to make it a more perfect union. It's come a long way since those founding fathers in 1776. It's come a long way since the 1800s and the Civil War. We've come a long way and into the 20th century of the civil rights and all the other things that have taken place and more to come. We're not there yet, but thank God that we have the opportunities and the privileges that we have in this nation. We recognize we are not a perfect union, but we are striving to form a more perfect union. God put it in my heart years ago as the pastor of this church, whenever he said to me, where are the people of color in this church? And it was all white. With a, there were some Hispanic and maybe one or two Asian. And I said, Lord, we have minorities here. He said, you know what I mean. I said, black, he said, where are they at? And I said, I've never seen anyone like that in Patterson. He said, did you look? And I said, not really. He said, won't you try looking? And from that point on, two weeks later, our first African-American family was in the church. And from that time, we've done our very best to make welcome and to reach out to every ethnicity that is in Patterson because we believe this is the heart of God, that all people should have liberty and freedom, that all people are equal in the sight of God. We are all his children, and we are his sons and daughters. Before John comes, and John, if you'll get ready to come, I just want to invite you to join 
in this patriotic part of the service because Christianity and patriotism have much in common. It was a Baptist clergyman by the name of Samuel, Samuel Francis Smith who wrote the patriotic hymn, My Country, Tis of Thee. In 1892, a Baptist minister, Frank Francis Bellamy, wrote the Pledge of Allegiance. The words on our currency and coins, in God we trust, was contributed November 1861 by the Reverend W.R. Watkinson of Ridleyville, Pennsylvania. And the only clergyman to sign the Declaration of Independence was the president of the College of New Jersey, the Reverend John Witherspoon, a Presbyterian. During World War II, a Jewish musician and songwriter, Irving Berlin, wrote the patriotic song, God Bless America. Its lyrics are in the form of a prayer. I would invite you to take a look at that song and read the lyrics that are there. It was made famous during World War II, sung by Kate Smith, God Bless America. May that be our prayer. May it be our prayer, God Bless America. Can you say amen? I'd like to take just one more John, I asked you specifically to sp sing Great is Thy Faithfulness. It's one of my favorite, favorite hymns. And I think of the day that I was saved in Vietnam, 8 March 1968. God has been so good to me. His blessings of salvation, Brother Naji with 10,000 besides. He has blessed us so immensely, and I am grateful, grateful for his every blessing. And I'm thankful that you inserted this song, Amazing Grace, written in 1772 by a former slave owner, John Newton. God changed that man's life, and those lyrics tells you of how God transformed that man's life. Thank God for his amazing grace. He can change anyone's life. If, he allow, if they allow God to change them, he can change anyone's life. Hallelujah. Now I want to conclude, I want to conclude today's message to, or service with just a very brief message from the Gospel of John. And our text is found in John chapter 8 verses 31 through 36. To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, if, that's the condition, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. That's what you prayed today, Brother Eugene, you didn't know what my text was, but you asked God to fill this land with truth. They answered him, we are, not, we are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Hallelujah. Free indeed. Free indeed. That's the title of my message today. So when you leave here today, remember, if you are a child of God, you are free indeed. So I want to talk to you just a few minutes about what Jesus said in verse 36, free indeed. You see, slavery comes in many ways. It can be intellectual, it can be moral, it can be social, it can be physical, but it's still slavery. And so I want to talk to you today more importantly about that slavery is spiritual slavery, a slavery to sin. For most of us in America, we have no real understanding of what slavery to sin is. They are like those that said to Jesus, we've never been slaves to anyone. Without Jesus Christ, every human being 
is a slave to sin. In verse 31, Jesus set a condition to spiritual freedom. He said, if you hold to my teaching, and his teaching is his word, you are really my disciples or followers. In verse 32, he says, then, always look for the condition and the fulfillment. If and then, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. You see, if you're not a follower of Jesus Christ, you're never going to know the truth. You see, if, if you hold to my teaching, America's de described today as post-Christian. Less than 50% in America are Christian. They have abandoned their faith. They have turned away from the living God and have made themselves God and live after their own pleasures. But if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples, my followers. Then, if you are a real follower of God, then you will know the truth. You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. In verse 33, the Jews deny they've ever been slaves of anyone. Really? David removed the words just for a moment so we can see, just as a reminder. They forgot the exodus, didn't they? They forgot their Egyptian bondage. We've never been slaves to anyone. At that very moment, they were slaves of Rome. The arrogance of sin, the denial of sin. We've never been slaves. I'm not a slave to anything. Really? Really? They forgot about God's miraculous liberation in the exodus. We've never been slaves to anyone. In verse 34, Jesus makes it clear that everyone who sins is a slave to sin. You see, this chapter 8 was introduced by this woman that you see standing in that image, the woman caught in adultery. What kind of human beings would set up a woman to be taken, to be stoned to death? They are just as much sinners as the woman caught in sin herself. And where's the man? Caught in the act of adultery. And that's why this image tells us everyone who sins is a slave to sin. It doesn't matter whether you're a religious leader or not. It doesn't matter whether you claim to be a righteous person or you're the worst sinner in town. Everyone without Christ is a slave to sin. You see, this slavery is not external that I'm talking about. It's internal. A condition which no one can free themselves from. It is the condition of a wrong relationship outside of God. It is slavery to sin, a bondage that no one can break. I remember before I came to Christ, there were things in my life that I wanted to get rid of, but I couldn't. I was a slave to those addictions. I was slave to those things that propelled me beyond my will to do the things that I didn't want to do. Remember what the Apostle Paul wrote in Romans chapter 7 when he said, The things that I don't want to do, I find myself doing. And the things that I, that I want to do, I don't do. And then he cried out at the end of that verse and said, Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? Our bodies without Christ is driving us to death. It is driving us to destruction. It will do everything in its power to destroy our lives. You see, today we're being reminded that there is a slavery and there is a freedom. You see, a slave needs a redeemer. A slave is owned by someone, but the slave desires to be free, to be set free from slavery. And in spiritual slavery, only Jesus Christ can set a man free. Only God sets free. Only Jesus and his shed blood upon Calvary's cross will set free. You see, Jesus saves he redeems, He sets free, he, liber he liberates, He makes free indeed. When this woman was brought to Him, 
He said, you without sin cast the first stone. And they recognized they were sinners. From the oldest to the youngest, they dropped their stones and walked away. And finally, she alone was left. And he said, woman, where are your, your accusers? And there were none. And he said, I do not accuse you either. I do not condemn you. But in her repentance and in her exception of her Savior and Redeemer, Jesus told her, go and sin no more. I tell you, it is time for America's believers. It's time for those followers of Jesus Christ to, to leave and abandon their sins and return to the living God. Return to the living God before it's too late. Before it's too late. Go and sin no more. You've been set free from your sin. You've been set free from your sin. Don't go back to it. Don't go back to it. Don't go back to it. You know what's very interesting in our text in, in, in this 8th chapter in the 35th verse. Let me read it to you. It says, Jesus is speaking to these Jewish people and he says, Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. Do you realize this is what theologians call a mini parable? This was called a mini parable, M-I-N-I, -I, a very short, small parable that he is addressing. And what he's dealing with is slavery and referring to a slave. In Christ's days, there were many, many slaves of all kinds. There was the doulos, D-O-U-L-A-S, which was the lowest form of a slave. Doulos was a field hand, and a field hand had no rights whatsoever. And then there was different levels of slavery on into the household to where the highest level of a slave was a manager of the household, much like Joseph was in the house of Potiphar. He was the overseer of all of his master's uh, household. Slaves came in all colors. There was not limited to Africans or African nations, but from all walks of life, slavery, slavery. Jesus referring to a slave. He says they have no permanent place. You see, when the field hand dies, they just dig a hole out in the field and bear them up and you, it, it cover them up and you move on. But he said not so for a family member. Not so with a family. You see, a son lives forever. A son is an heir. A son is going to receive the benefits of the father. And so he's trying to make very clear what will happen to a slave. A slave is one that is completely under the domination or control of another person. A slave is not only a slave physically, but it can be a slave of a substance. It can be a slave of an influence. Someone that's taken control of you. How many today are slaves of, of peer pressure? Know that know to do better and yet don't because someone is pressuring them to live up to their expectations. And there's a slavery, there's a bondage to that influence, which for, for many leads them into all kinds of substance abuse from drugs to alcohol to pornography, to prostitution, to whatever it may be. Slavery, slavery under the domination or control of another person or a substance or influence. Sin, sin, define sin. There's multiple definitions of sin, whether it be iniquity or transgression or sin. There are different definitions of sin. But in essence, sin is rebellion against God. When God says, don't we do? How many are in rebellion to the living God today? Not only in America, but around the world. God said, don't do it. And we do it anyway. He said the day to Adam and Eve, the day that you eat or touch that fruit, you will surely die. I want to say to young people today, be very careful of what you do in your life as you serve the Lord. There will come often many temptations, and the temptation is to handle it. 
It is to look at it. It knows don't do it, but we do it anyway. Eventually, the final outcome, as, as you are obsessed with it and dealing and considering it, is falling prey to it. And then there's the, there's the, 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 the obscene idea that I can control it. You can never control sin. Sin is addiction. Sin will control you. The wages of sin is death. That's the final outcome of sin. Adam and Eve, when they died, they died instantly in the garden. Many people don't know that. The moment that they handled that fruit, the moment it touched their lips, the moment that they began to chew and to swallow that, that substance, they died right there on the spot. You say, well, how? Well, man dies three ways. My, man dies spiritually. Man dies eternally. And man dies physically. One day you're going to be buried unless Jesus comes. We're all going to die. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Sin is rebellion against God. It is the rejection of his word. It is no longer a relationship with him. There's no permanent place for a slave in the family or the household of God. You see, the family, the household is for children, God's children. It's for the owner's children. It's his household. His children are heirs. They're going to own everything one day that he gives to them. They are heirs of God, the Bible tells us, and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Heirs of freedom. Heirs of deliverance. Heirs of salvation. Heirs of eternity. Heirs of permanence in God's house forever. Jesus emphasizes true freedom. And it's forever, free indeed, free indeed, real freedom, true freedom. The word where it says indeed there, free indeed, the word e indeed means real, really free. It means truly free. It means actually free. For real, it's free. Whom the Son sets free is really free. I'm not under the control of sin. I'm not in the chains of slavery of sin. It doesn't possess me. It doesn't control me. It can't make me do what it's trying to get me to do. Oh, Lord, set us free. Set us free. Set us free. Set us free. Set us free from hatred. Set us free from bigotry. Set us free from discrimination. Set us free from every evil, wicked thing. And by the way, it comes in all colors. Every form of hatred. No one is exempt from that discrimination and hatred, prejudice. Oh God, help us. Help us to realize we are one people under God. We are one people, one blood. God give us freedom, true freedom from the control and domination of sin and of Satan and of every diabolical form of slavery from addictions to demon possession. As I come to the close of this morning's message, I ask you this. Have you been struggling with sin? Has sin overcome you? Is there something in your life you're trying to get rid of and you haven't been able to? That's because it's, you're addicted you are bound, you are chained by sin. In verse 36, it's the conclusion of the Lord's message. So if the Son sets you free, you might be free indeed. Or you could be free. I'm just checking, I'm just checking now. Checking. You will be. See, you will be. You will be what? Really free. Truly free actually free you see only Jesus makes free only he sets free I looked up this word free free it means free to go anywhere you want to go to do whatever you wish to do to be whatever God created you to be free 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 from peer pressure free from substance abuse free from addictions free free really free Free, free, hallelujah. Now the Bible tells us this freedom alone is in Christ. 
Only Jesus breaks the chains of sin and Satan's bondage. So as I close today, I'm not giving you, I'll give you verbally if you want to write down the scriptures. We're not showing them on the monitor. But I want you to record when you get a chance and read Luke 8, 26 through 39. It is the story of Legion. You know Legion. Legion means 1,000. He had a, over 1,000 demons in him. He, he wouldn't wear clothes. He stripped himself down naked. And he lived in a cemetery. People were afraid to go by there because he would scream out. You didn't go by there at night for sure. Ah! Oh, ah! Who's going to go by that at night? Not me. I'd be running by it. There's that crazy legion again. Well, they had him shackled. No, look, his chains are broken. My chains are free. Huh? I've been set free. Huh? Well, he came to set him free. You see, Jesus, Jesus was over in Capernaum in North Galilee. And he sailed all the way across the Galilee to get to the other side, to Gersaga, where this man was at. He deliberately went to him. I'm telling you here today, Jesus is here for you today. He came here today for you, and he will set you free. If your addiction, if your possession is so strong, I want to tell you there's one greater than your sin, greater than your addiction. It's Jesus Christ, and he has the power to set you free. He makes free, really free. He makes free. He'll restore you in your mind and in your soul, just like he said he did this man. He was in his right mind. He was clothed. He became a... He was no longer a slave to sin. He now became a son in the family of God. He was made part of the household of God. Oh, I tell you, that should be our desire today to be a son or daughter of God and in the family of God and to have real freedom. Amen. To mock that and make light with that is you're a perverted person that needs to be delivered yourself. God's word is true. I adhere to his teaching. His teaching shows me the truth and the truth sets me free. He not only set legion free, but I want to tell you about a woman in Luke 13, verses 10 through 17. A woman that had been crippled by a spirit of infirmity. You see her, she's all bent over here. She's bent over, been bent. That don't mean all people are bent by, by a spirit, but this woman was bound by a spirit that bent her over so she couldn't walk upright, so she couldn't enjoy her life, so that she couldn't enjoy her freedom of life. She was bent over. That's what the devil does. He will rob you of your life. He will put you in bondage. He will make you hate the very day you were born. He will cause you to curse the living God. Why am I like this? Jesus referred to her. He saw her and he healed her on the Sabbath. And the Jewish hypocrites, they didn't like it. You see, there will always be someone who doesn't like what God does. It would be the most perfect thing and somebody would find fault with it. Yeah, but he didn't do it this way. Or he didn't do it the way I wanted him to do it. Or he didn't do it on the right day, my day, birthday, whatever it might be. Always someone will find fault with God. But I'll tell you this, God said, your ways are not my ways and your thoughts are not my thoughts. For as high, as high as the heavens are above the earth are my ways and my thoughts above your ways and your thoughts. You want to be successful? I challenge you to read the book. I challenge you to understand God's principles, His teachings, and he will bless you and prosper you in ways you've never dreamed of before. Well, he said about this woman in response to those hypocrites, he said in Luke 13, 16, should not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has kept bound for 18 long years, be set free on the Sabbath day from what bound her? Shouldn't we on this Lord's day be set free from anything that binds us, and especially if Satan has bound us. 
things that's in our lives that we want to get rid of, but we don't because we have no power over it, it is here today. That power is here today to deliver, to set free. It really is. Finally, consider the slave girl in Acts 16, verses 16 through 18. This is the deliverance of a young fortune teller in Philippi. I've been to Philippi. I had the privilege to do an academic study tour of, of, of Turkey and Greece. And Philippi is in Macedonia in Greece. And this woman, it was a, it was the, it was a Roman colony where retired military lived. It was a very prosperous community. And there were business people that had this woman in their, in their business. She was very successful in fortune telling. And it was because she had a demon spirit. She was bound by a demon spirit. She was not speaking of her own knowledge. There was a demon that spoke through her. And she was pretty successful at it because the, the people that owned her was making a lot of money off of her. I tell you what, there are women today that are in bondage by those that are profiting off of their slavery. Do you hear me today? Those that are watching by Facebook and YouTube, hear me today. There are women across this globe that are bound by those that are profiting off of their slavery, whether it be the sex trafficking and the sex trade or the drug trade. They are prisoners of sin. They are prisoners to their own, to their masters. It is imperative that we get these women and others to Jesus because he sets free true freedom, real freedom. It was every day it was the same thing. This woman, when they she saw Paul and Silas would proclaim them as great men of God. Finally, Paul was so disturbed, he turned and rebuked the spirit that was in her, and she was instantly set free. You see, it isn't always the laying on of hands. It isn't always some religious ritual that you go through. It is the power of the living God, whether it is spoken, whether it is the laying on of hands, or whatever it may be, but it is God that does the work. He sets free. True freedom, real freedom, actual freedom, it's when the Son sets you free. And when He does, you are free indeed. Free from the power of sin. Free to hold to His teaching. Free to walk in His light. After He dealt with the woman that was caught in adultery, He said this in John 8, 12. He said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. America is walking in darkness, and it is time for the light of life. It is time for the light of life. I don't know about you, but there have been times in my life that sin has entered into my life and took control over me that I absolutely needed God to remove that from my life like a cancer. None of us are perfect. We all come short. And just because you sin don't mean that you're a devil. So get that straight, okay? All right. But we all sin. The aged Apostle John, nearly 100 years old, wrote in 1 John 1 and verse 9, that if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So, None of us are perfect, but those that of us that have come to Christ for salvation, we are forgiven. Our sins are forgiven, and we are cleansed and made holy in the sight of God. That is available for all people. Then there are those that the, the, the devil has so bound and enslaved by sin that God loves them so much that he comes and encounters them and offers them true freedom. 
true freedom. Do you need freedom today?